The Commonwealth Games are just starting and the heat is on. Everyone's looking out for what the athletes will do and who will win the gold and silver. Athletes from all over the world have now arrived in Birmingham to test their luck and prowess, hoping they could score something to make their country proud. In this video, we'll go over Ella Connolly and how she'll take on the world's fastest after making Australia's Commonwealth Games squad. First off, Ella Connolly's time to shine? It's been five years since Ella Connolly debuted at the World Championships as a raw relay runner. And now she's reached the point where she's the Australian sprint star who will be taking on many of the world's fastest women and we just can't wait to see the results. Whatever happens, we know the run would be very entertaining and thrilling, making the fans wonder till the last minute about who will bring them their golds, silvers and bronzes. It's pretty neat statistics for the country she's representing too if she wins. Did you know that Australia has the highest numbers of gold in the Commonwealth Games? The number is 80 if you're wondering. This could be another huge victory for the land down under if Connolly ends up winning in the women race. Now that she's 21 and in perfect form, she'll tackle the 100 meter, 200 meter and 4x100 meter relay. Next, Australia's best. Another small interesting fact for you, Ella Connolly, the Queenslander, was among 53 athletes added on Tuesday to an 85 strong track and field team for the games beginning in Birmingham in late July. So 53 athletes of her country that she'll be competing with, not against, hoping they make Australia proud and bring home medals. She was joined on the start line by Dina Asher-Smith, who's supposed to be really good too, considering she won the 200 meter world championship. Alongside her, Connolly will also have a host of other flyers from the Caribbean, even though the likes of powerhouse Jamaica have yet to finalize their squads. And the Caribbean women racers are a force to be reckoned with, so Connolly has her work cut out for her. It won't be easy, but Australia's hope depends on her. Considering how she's been competing with women all over the world since she was merely a teenager, she's coming here with a lot of experience. This experience will help her win medals for Australia that's already been dominating the world thanks to the outstanding sprinters they produce. Lastly, the hopeful Connolly. Connolly told AAP that this is her very first individual senior team and she's extremely excited to be a part of it. She said that it's particularly exciting to be competing in three events as well. For her, it's been a rough five years years because of all of the injuries and she's missed out on a lot of teams in these years. But she's back and can't wait to do well. Just about two weeks before the trials for the 2018 Commonwealth Games, Connolly tore a hamstring and had to sit out. Imagine missing out on an international event because of an injury, something that'd stop you from participating in events that we can only dream about. She said that she was super devastated to miss a home Commonwealth Games, even though she loved watching all her friends compete. Of course she was distressed anyone would be. But she's very grateful now that for this season she was able to qualify. The last time she participated in the comms games was back in 2017. And if you want to know how she feels about that, well, she said that the comms in 2017, London, feel like a lifetime ago now. Connolly plans to better both her marks of the last domestic summer season in Birmingham. She's been injured a lot in the last five years, but her return has been epic as well. She's already shown what an amazing athlete she is during her training and qualifying rounds, and Australia hopes that the 21-year-old will bring in gold or at least silver for the country. And to spice things up, joining her in the 200 meter and the sprint relay will be longtime friend and rival Riley Day. This would be very interesting to see, seeing how the two are one of the best sprinters and their friendship and rivalry will add a fun element for the Aussies and the fans of the two women. We wish Ella Connolly the very best for her sprint and relay races against the world's best sprinters. We know she'll do her very best no matter what. Let's talk about other news in the sprinting and relay races. Firstly, Australian Commonwealth squad is age diverse. Remember Rohan Browning, the guy who at last year's Tokyo Olympics came within a whisker of becoming just the second Australian to break the 10 second barrier? Well, he'll be headlining the men's sprint assault in Birmingham. He'll contest the 100 meter and the 4x100 meter, while the 21 year old Queenslander, Jake Doran, has been named the headliner in both individual individual sprints and the relay. Eloise Welling will be on the other end of the experience scale and will create history as the first Australian track and field athlete to compete at five Commonwealth Games. Now, she's a mother of two and Wellings will form part of a formidable triple-pronged threat in the marathon with Jessica Stenson and Sinead Diver. During her interview, the 39-year-old Wellings said that she has vivid memories of her first games in Melbourne. She was screaming down the home straight in front of 90,000 people 
Apple. She said that she has beautiful memories like that from each of her Commonwealth game appearances. She continued to say that to be selected for Birmingham was especially exciting for her after she missed the Tokyo Olympics last year and as a female athlete you never really know and are never really sure if you'll be back at your best after having a baby. But the fact that she participated speaks a lot about her dedication and courage. Tokyo Olympics medalists Nicola Olislagers for high jump, Ash Maloney for decathlon, and Kelsey Lee Barber for javelin also locked in their spots in the squad earlier this year. Next up, Ball breaks Oceania record as Australian men master the mile. Peter Ball has lowered the Australian 800 meters for the third time and he thought for a moment that he'd earned a perfect early birthday present for his coach at the Paris Diamond League meeting, but alas. Ball, the amazing half miler, was outpaced for victory on Saturday night by a motivated but debatable finish from hometown favorite Benjamin Robert, with Ball's comfort being a new Oceanian landmark of 1 minute 44 seconds for the two lap event. So when the news came through that Robert had been disqualified, it left the Perth runner to wonder if he had been handed the opportunity for his coach Justin Rinaldi, whose birthday is on Sunday, and whether he could finally do what he wanted to do, meaning giving his coach his birthday present. Not so easy, maybe, because an appeal from Robert was upheld later. Ball said he wanted to run a minute 43 and give Justin an early birthday present for tomorrow. He was a bit short, but was stoked with the personal best and national record. He had also bettered his own Oceanian mark of 1 minute 44.11 seconds set at the Olympics last year when he finished fourth. So his competition usually is just himself. He also said that this was not a surprise because he and his coaches have built this new level of confidence and when training is going well, there's no reason why they can't run his own fast times and be competitive on the world stage. Ball's record-breaking feat completes an amazing week for Australian athletics after Sydney's Ollie Hoare shattered the Australian record for the mile in Oslo, Norway. So, sprinters have been doing pretty well for Australia, haven't they? Lastly, New Zealand and Australia battle for sprint dominance in Mackay. New Zealand and Australia may be friendly neighbours, but their fierce competitive spirit is always a treat. On the second day of the Oceania Championships in Mackay, Australia completed a sweep of the men's individual sprint titles, and New Zealand did likewise in the women's races. Their rivalries most expressed on the rugby and cricket fields, but it's now carried over into other contests as well. This rivalry can be seen best during the middle and long distance races in the unresolved and unresolvable debate as to whether Herb Elliott would have beaten Peter Snell or vice versa. We may never know considering they don't have competitions over 1500 meters. Aidan Murphy and Caleb Law, the two teenagers, went 1-2 in the men's 200 meters and first day 100 meters winner Jake Doran finished third. Australia took all three medals. Even though Steve Solomon withdrew late, Alex Beck won the 400 meter and showed Australia's dominance in the sprints. In response, Georgia Hulls took the women's 200 meter for New Zealand and Rosie Elliott and Izzy Neal finished first and second in the 400 meter. The two are at each other's throats in the friendly yet intense competitions and we're here for it. Well, that's it from our side today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or thoughts about Ella Connolly taking on the world's fastest after making Australia's Commonwealth Games squad, do let us know in the comments below. See you in the next one.